The word of God is potent, pulling down every stronghold. You are about to listen to a message from When Women Pray, a non-denomination women praying ministry. As you listen, may God's word transform you in Jesus' name. Lift up your hands wherever you are. I just want you to begin to pray in the prayer language of the Spirit. Somebody go ahead, go ahead. Come on, fire yourself up in the prayer language of the Spirit. Fire yourself up. Hey. Fly cannot perch on a hot stove. Somebody fire yourself up. Fire yourself up. Hey, 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 hey. Mandala bosha kaya bosa. Ika na baba shanta la bosa kere boshe tele bosa ta. Mandele bosi kaya wakuri andala bosha ta. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Mighty deliverer. Ancient of days, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Come on, somebody say, believe in amen. Give somebody a high five and say, I am fired up. Say it like you mean it. Say, I am fired up. I am fireized. Hallelujah. Mantalaba. You can take your seat. Go ahead and take your seat. Praise the Lord. I have a little assignment here this morning. Like our topic says, it's a prayer, it's an investment. I just want to exhort you on prayer. Prayer is an investment. I say to women, whenever I come in contact with them, I say, a woman who sleeps through the night is a foolish woman. You don't know who you are. You don't know ma- See, Joyce Meyer was saying the other day, she said she, was, she sleeps on a waterbed. I don't know how many of us sleep on waterbeds now. That she sleeps on waterbed, that does not make you, her to sleep throughout the night. Some of you, you have not seen anything yet. Don't relax. <laughs> you have not seen anything yet. Therefore, don't relax. Don't rest on your oars. It's time to stand up. See, I told you people a secret and I'll tell you again. The best time that me and my husband pray, when we pray like that, is when we have just hit a victory. <laughs> when there is a victory, that's when we pray like look let me tell you this is called when women pray when you come here remove your high heel are you listening to me drop everything keep your accolades somewhere stand up and pray <laughs> because I have seen people in trouble <laughs> they, did, they forgot their high heel I've seen people in trouble they did not make up are you listening to me? I've seen a woman trying to... When her, her child wanted to die, she was almost naked. She was running. Hey! There's no guy. This is the time to do it. Invest it. So that you will not run. So that you will not be a mad person. So that you... I remember me and my husband were driving the car. He saw his classmate mad on the road. Naked, walking like this. My husband was shouting Jesus till we got home. He said that boy was an ajebota. You don't understand. Ajebobo. So, if your children are going to be ajebota and they will be mad later, this is the time to pray. Invest that prayer, woman of God. I talked to somebody here. 
This is the time to pray. I've seen a lady come to my office and she said to me, look at my mother. My mother is there wearing all the jewelry. No, we are seven of us. No one is doing well. Do you want somebody to curse you in your old age? You want those children to look at you and say you are a witch. Mommy, it's because of you we are not doing well. You want those children to say, just pray now that you have the strength. Invest it now that you have the strength. Leave guy. People who know me here, they know I'm a guy girl. Oh. You know those kind of guy you would do that sometimes it will jam. You know, make sense. When you come out, they'll say, huh, where did they go? <laughs> Nonsense guy. I told you about my best friend and I one time. We developed a kind of guy. And I want to so wear socks. <laughs> socks and shoes. My friend and my best friend, they have drive and car. Me, I will enter bus and meet her. So we're to meet somewhere. And now we are all the socks and shoes. Enter the bus. Everybody was looking at my leg. <laughs> they look me, look me, look me, look my face. <laughs> Some people were wondering, is she a police woman? <laughs> we are, who is she? <laughs> and I just finished secondary school. Only me, I went to the back of the bus. Then I bent down and removed the socks. <laughs> and put it in my handbag. Leave the guy, you will do it. Sometimes, you know, guy, no jam. You will do the guy, you know. You see some people when they make up and come out. Clown, clown. Clown me. Hallelujah! Pray. Invest it now. And let me tell you the best time to pray. When nothing is happening. <laughs> because have you seen a man give a testimony in church? He said he had... His son took a drug that he reacted to. So the boy was dying. He said, I held the boy on my lap. I could not say one word of prayer. You think it's when you're in trouble you will pray? Sometimes you, don't, you cannot articulate it. You have not seen You see people on the road dying, you know, it's okay. Let your own person, your own person. You will wee wee, you won't know. You will just wee wee. You won't know. This is the best time. When nothing is happening. Invest it. This is the time to pray. Sometimes you will pray in your house. You will go around your house. Yeah! Yeah! The cooks look at you. It is their business. You are communicating with heaven. I remember when we moved into our house in Port I will, I will come out in the night like this. Devil, where are you? Devil, come out. I will beat you physically. I will beat you spiritually. Devil! One day, devil actually appeared. He told me, he said, I didn't come home. I didn't come. I didn't come. I said, if you come 1,000 meters close to my house, I will kill you. He said, I'm not coming home. I didn't come home. I didn't, I didn't even send anybody. I said, don't come. Don't even dare. Face does not fear face. Go to the realm of the spirit. Go and shake up the realm of the spirit. Come on, you must be praying continually. You must be on fire for God. There's no guy in prayer. <laughs> Have you noticed the Muslims, whether they're in London, whether they're in America, that they are prayer, whether they're in a meeting with you, they say, excuse me, I want to pray. Then a Christian, you will be doing dirty guy because you are in MS shopping. The Spirit of God will say, Pray now. He will say, When I get home, I will pray. Pray best when there is nothing happening. That is the time to pray. Pray. Shake out the, sometimes do something abnormal in your house. Go around, speak to your pot, speak to your children. I've told you, women, the best time to pray for a child is when he's asleep. Speak over his spirit, man, and begin to tell him, You will not disgrace me. I have seen your beginning, I will not see your end. Ah, I fire you as an arrow to your targets. Ah, 
Have you seen people doing incantation over their own? Then you, you will not pray. <laughs> I fire you. You will not miss target. You are not a misguided arrow. You will not be an arrow to, an arrow to my heart. You will be a, a, an arrow in my hand. You hold it like this. Bah! And you will fire that child. One after the other. Call their name. Sometimes I hold their leg. I'll just hold your leg. They will wake up, see me. I'll say, sleep. No nonsense. Not in the evening of your life. When you are supposed to relax. With gray hair. I've seen women with gray hair pray, cry and it pains my soul. With gray hair. When you are supposed to be going from Omugo to Omugo. You will be there looking for pastor and prophets. Over your children. Oh, let me not pass myself. Prayer is an investment. <laughs> oh, one thing I want to tell a woman here, or a man here, is that you cannot over pray. There's no overdose. There's no overdose. Take it. In the morning, take one dose. In the night, take one dose. You can even pray throughout the whole hours of the day. Just be drinking it. When you remember, pray. Instead of you to sit down and just rubbish with your mouth. You know women who can just. The one that concerns you, the one you have not verified, you will say. I remember when we were in secondary school. We used to carry one gist. They would say, eh, and some people wrote us letter. Some androbas wrote the school letter, they are coming. So they told me, me, I did not verify. I, I spread it more. I said spreading. So assembly came. The principal and I said, there's a rumor going on that some people wrote us like, please, if there's anybody who told you, bring the person out. <laughs> Everybody was coming towards me. I said, yeah, yo. I have not verified it, please. <laughs> I have not verified. I was begging all the people. When they would come to me, say, you are the one that told me. I said, please. There are some stories you even carry about Bwari. If they say, oh yeah, come, where did you verify it? Oh. No need just in it. Keep quiet. Child of God, prayer is not a last resort. <laughs> is somebody listening to me? Prayer is not a last resort. <laughs> it is a first line of defense. It's not when you have done all that you begin to pray. The first thing you do, they call you. A child is sick. Something is happening. Your husband just slumped in the office. The first thing you will say is, Father, you didn't tell me I'll be a widow. I command that man's spirit back into him in the name of Jesus. Man, come. Now they are calling and say, I'm coming. I'm coming. Before you now start looking for hospital. I heard a story a long time ago. About a woman who was waiting for a child for 22 years. And she had a child, a baby girl. And one day, the child put a bead in her nose and it won't come out. So she called this woman and she said, Please, do you know any hospital that they can do a surgery now, now, now? The woman asked, What is the problem? He said, My daughter just put a bead in her nose. He said, eh, Let me think, oh, I have not. Hospital. Then she now asked her, have you prayed? She said, I have not actually prayed. She said, can we pray? You know, the woman was shaking at the other side. Can we pray? She said, okay, now, okay, okay. Let's just pray. And they prayed a simple prayer. And she said, amen. Then she, then, as she said, amen, an idea came to the other woman. Said, she said, can you put rub on her nose? She said, we have tried everything. I said, just put that rub. Put the rub. And she put the rub. As she dropped the phone, the lady, the daughter just sneezed. Boom! Everything came out. It is not a last resort. It's the first line of defense. Prayer is a privilege, not a duty. Prayer is a privilege, not a duty. Therefore, prayer requires discipline. <laughs> Child of God, you must be disciplined. When we talk about prayer, look, I slept very late last night. 
But when it was time for my prayer, I stood up. I was even begging God. I said, God, let me just sleep small. He said, okay, you pray small. Hallelujah. It is discipline. Put it into your system that you will pray. Is that okay? You must pray. Whether you are sad, you will pray. Whether you are sick, you will pray. Whether you don't feel like, whether your husband annoyed you, pray. Your wife annoyed you, pray. Just go. Go go to that place of prayer. Just go. Just go. Go and tell God how you feel. Instead of not praying at all, just go there and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm feeling so sad. Have you read Psalms? David will say, why don't you help me speedily? God, see what my enemies are doing to me. Have you read Psalms? He tells God how he feels. When he's happy, he will talk to God. When he's sad, he will talk to God. Then why? In the book of Timothy, Paul was telling Timothy, he said, do the work of an evangelist in season and out of season. Meaning, when you are having PMS, when you are ovulating, when you have period pains, you know women, we have a way now, mood swings. He said, pray. If a woman, I dare a woman, I dare you, I dare somebody here, I give you one month. Pray every day at a particular time, one month. You will enjoy a kind of grace that you will be asking yourself, where have I been all this while? Brethren, you pray to God and you speak to the situation. You pray to God. Have you seen Jesus pray? You say, Father, I know you always hear me. <laughs> you always hear me when I pray. Then when he finishes, you say, Lazarus, come forth. You pray to God and you speak to the situation. Some of you just wake up, you are speaking to the situation till you say amen, you go and sleep. Hallelujah. Prayer is a spiritual force that affects both the physical and the spiritual. <laughs> Prayer is a spiritual force that affects both the physical and the spiritual worlds. That's why I told you that I was speaking to Lucifer. <laughs> Excuse me. Prayer is the strongest problem solving power available to humanity. Hallelujah. The book of James, chapter 5, from verse 13 says, Is anyone suffering? Is anyone in affliction? What should he do? Woman of God, please, I want you to shout it. What should he do? But most of us, what do we do? You complain. You worry. You tell your best friend. You tell your husband. You tell, you, you, you can talk to an unknown person. You can call into a radio station and begin to tell them all your problems. How it happened to you. But the Bible gives a prescription. There is a prescription for the afflicted. Ah, there is a tablet that you should take. There is something you must drink when you are afflicted. And what is that? Prayer. Is anyone afflicted? Pray. Pray. Some of you, have you noticed that it's when you are afflicted you can't pray? <laughs> he said you should pray. Hallelujah. Prayer shatters every trick of the devil. <laughs> Every trick, anywhere he likes, you want to come here. I pass here, no way. I pass here, no way. All his tricks, prayer shatters it. Hallelujah. Prayer is a deliberate communication with God. It keeps our relationship, our relationship with God alive. That's why some people say, I am now romancing the Holy Spirit. I'm having a sweet time. That's what prayer can do to you. He will tell you. He said, are you lacking wisdom? He said, you should ask. <laughs> so that thing that you are trying to make a decision, whether you should marry this guy or you should marry this other one, it's not time to do tumbo tumbo bus calabar. It is time, instead of you to do that tumbo tumbo, speak it in tongues. Macharaba ton tolobo. Begin to pray. Mazadaga dogo sheke teke teke. Ha! The wrong one will show up. He will just throw tantrums the following day. 
then you will know that if you marry this man, one day will lock you inside your kitchen store and beat you. And maybe it's that one that has been buying you credit. <laughs> he's buying you credit. He has been promising you I will give you a ticket to London. But the other guy, whenever he comes, he will say he's hungry. He says, see this foolish man. He is the one that will take care of you. You know when my husband came, when he said he wanted to marry me, I said, Jesus, is that where my own way I looked at his car. I said, Father, I've seen cars on the road. Why do you select this one for me? I've seen different types of cars. They'll all pass. Viam, viam. Are there no human beings driving them? Where are they? Let them come. And so I went to pray. I don't know how God... Sometimes whenever I think of this thing, I am so humbled. I just thank Holy Spirit. He is so good to me. I went to pray. I said, Father, there's this young man that said he wants to marry me. Is he the one? Then I now did like Gideon. I said, if he's the one, let this thing happen. Let this thing happen. I made it so difficult for God. Lo and behold, it happened. And I said, God, it's a mistake. Let's do it again. And we did it again. Lo and behold, it happened. Then I submitted. How I even submitted is a miracle. You know, because sometimes some of you, you know the truth, but you can't submit. And I remember the day he went to meet my elder ones that he wants to marry me. You're not supposed to be there in our culture. So I wasn't there. I was in the room. And after talking to them, my elder sister, who is like my mom, came into the room. And she called me. She said, Upoya. She spoke it in her dialect. It was so heavy. She said, Upoya, if this is the man that wants to marry you, we are not afraid to give you to him. She said, I say it again. If this is the man that wants to marry you, we are not afraid to give you. And I tell you the truth. I married the most responsible man. That man is a blessing to my life. If not for that man, you won't see me here. I tell you the truth. He has never brought disgrace. Even when we didn't have, when we were earning how much, sleeping on the ground, he has never come one day to say there's no house rent. There's no school fees. Lie. My husband will provide the school fees. He will be saving from that his meager salary. When I ask him for money for chocolate, he will say, <laughs> well, don't worry, when we arrive, you'll be eating chocolate. Now, I want to pay my children's school fees. I've never seen a man like that. Now, he will wake me up in the middle of the night. He'll say, sweetheart, where in the world do you want to travel to? <laughs> One day, the first day he asked me, I stood up, I said, hey, I'm not sleeping. <laughs> I'm awake. See that? I'm awake. He said, what? He said, oh, be serious now. Where do you want to travel to? On first class. Oh, don't envy me. Oh. Don't envy me. Don't envy me. You don't know my seed. Don't envy my fruit. When you see a woman, some of you, you see a woman enjoying it, you don't know. You say, oh, we used to do it when we were young. Say, so how this fine man come marry this ugly woman? You don't know how they started. You don't know. Hey, see how this woman they enjoy. You don't know. Leave her. Home. You don't know where she's coming from. My dear, stop sleeping. That your sleep is evil. That television you are watching is, is more evil. If you can keep that three hours you're using to watch that program and lock yourself in the room and mashaka basekete and refuse to take status quo. Some of you, you are so okay with status quo. Come on, say no to the status quo. Say no, I will not take it again. No, things will not just be happening like this. Some of you, you have watched the pattern. The pattern will pass like this. But happen again. Happen again. You say, hey, it happen every November. Oh. Che, this thing they happen every November, and you are still sitting there. 
You are looking for a prophet to prophesy. Hannah looked around, looked around. She did not see anybody. She went to the temple and she began to heke toko potoko. Hey, I don't know how she was praying. I don't know how you will pray now that your pastor will look at you and of a truth, he will be confused that you are drunk. He will see you will say, ah, my daughter, are you drunk? It's not joking, you no. Know? It's not a joke. It's not a, you know, he's not just making this thing. He is really thinking that you are drunk. She left everybody. She went there. She said, you don't do. No, 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 no. I don't know how she prayed that a backsliding prophet looked at her and said, by this time next year, oh, I said to somebody here, if you have been praying by this time next year, that status quo is changing. You are moving forward. You are moving forward. You are moving forward. You are moving forward. In the name of Jesus. Status quo has to shift. Boundaries need to move. You need to stretch your ten pegs. You need to move the foundation of it. You need to change some kind of things. You know, some women will enter a family and you look at the family, you say, no, 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 no. I will not take this. Not by talking. Some of you, you talk, 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 talk to your mother-in-law. No, 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 no. You and your mother-in-law will have problem. Your sister-in-law is quarreling with you. Your brother-in-law is not good with you. No! Go to the place of prayer. Hey, somebody go to your high, high, high place. If you have to go under your bed, go under your bed and begin to mash it, take it, take it, take it. Hey, I will not take this. I have seen a pattern in this house. I've noticed that the men, when they get to 40, they die. Hey, it will not happen to my husband. It will not happen to my children. It will not happen to my sons. Somebody invest in prayer. Woman, you are talking too much. You are talking too much. It's time to go to the place of prayer. It's time to stay in the place of prayer. It's time to say no. No to the things that are being. To the family witches that have been in the house. Hey, you notice that every time somebody marries, they come back home. Oh, you say no. I had a prayer partner. She noticed that all the boys in the family, they have only one son. In her husband's family. After that one son, they will tell you, you have done well. No more children. <laughs> so when she married, she said, <laughs> I'm a different person, father. I'm born again. I'm tongue-talking. I'm this. So she entered. And through through, she had a boy. After the boy, womb closed. She tried, tried, tried. No way. She did not know that he would stay. You see, it's not born again. It's not that scarf you are wearing. It's not how long your nails are. Or how high your heels are. It doesn't matter whether you don't fix weave or not. It doesn't matter whether you don't wear earring. But if you don't stay in the place of prayer, you are meat for the devil. You are just a carcass. <laughs> Satan will use you. He will stay in his place. He will remote control you. When he press pam, 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 he will be crying in your house. It's time you stop dancing to the music of Satan. When he plays his music, tell him, play it for someone else. Get out of here. You can go to Kurudu. But don't come near my house. There's only a praying woman that can do that. Or a praying man. And I tell you, the, the, I give you the prescription. Pray when it's good. Pray when it's not good. Pray when you are sad. Pray when you are crying. Pray at all times. There's not enough of prayer. There's no overdose. Hallelujah. Prayer is making an agreement with heaven to declare his glory. Prayer is making an agreement with heaven to declare his glory. Make an agreement with heaven. The Bible says, let the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. How will it be done? You think it's by reading it? Prayer is the vehicle that goes to eternity and brings to time the will of the Father. Those young girls, I pity you. From 16, you should know how to pray. What is 16? Those uh, Muslims, when do they teach them how to do all that? As far as you can talk. 
So stop saying complain about your parents. It's time to begin to sow. I heard a woman of God say she started praying for her children even when she was not married. She didn't even know who she would marry. It's time. Start now. Start praying. So that one day your son will not come to you. <laughs> Mommy, I've seen it before. I'm not telling you what I've not seen. Mommy, <laughs> I found a wife. When the wife bounced out in a man. When the man, the, the wife come out in a man. Then you will start crying, calling all your prophets. It, this is the time. You have not, you singles, you have not had the child. Though. This is the time to say, my son will not marry a man. My daughter will not marry a woman. In the name of Jesus. You, your mother didn't pray for you. Some of you who are doing it right now. Your mother didn't pray for you. Hallelujah. I want to say here, go with this. It is not your prayer that Satan is afraid of. Are you listening to me? It's not your prayer. It is your consistency. When you are consistent, Satan will be tired of you. This one is not, it's not a matter of a I don't know. You're not driving him. He's not running away. He will give up on you. Consistency. The Bible says in the book of Luke 18, when Jesus was saying, men ought to always pray and not to faint. Did you hear that? Men ought to. So don't lose heart. Don't faint. Don't lose heart. Some of you, you are praying because you did not see it. You stopped praying. You have, you have failed. You have failed because some of you, you pray, you push, you push, you push. You have just gotten to the edge where it will happen. Then you turn back. <laughs> when you are not seeing it, that is the time to pray the more. Don't hang around people that will discourage you. Hang around people who will encourage you. Keep praying. No prayer is wasted. I tell you the truth. Child of God, it is an investment. No prayer is wasted. You know, I was telling you that if you are praying... I prophesy on you. Let me tell you something. You remember Paul, who was Saul, when he was blind? When the angel, or when God called Ananias to go and lay hands on him, what did he say? He said, go and lay your hands on Saul, who was Paul, and Paul, who was Saul, and pray for him, because he has been praying. Go and read it. He said, because he has been praying. When you have been praying, you make the work of the pastor easy. When you have been praying, you have heavenly visitation. So whether you see it, you don't see it, you remember Elijah. You remember Elijah. The Lord told him, go, go, go and tell Ahab, I will send rain. <laughs> he went, he told Ahab. He said, I will send rain. And he went back to pray. Did he go back to Elijah? Hey, God, don't talk him. Child of God, I don't know what prophecy has been spoken over you. But when a prophecy comes, it's like a woman who is pregnant. Ah, when a prophecy comes, the Bible says that is the time to war with the prophecy. Go to the closet and begin to war with the prophecies that were spoken over your life. It doesn't matter what the man of God says. God bless you. Go and war with that. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Go and war with it. Some of you go and lie down and say, ah, they have spoken it. Let it be done. Elijah went to the place of prayer and the Bible said the position he took, that's the position of betting a child in those days. They didn't have maternity. That position is how you will stand on a stool like that to deliver a child. And he took that position and he began to wrap a kato koto koto. When he did finish, he called the servant. He said, go and check whether there's a cloud. He said, no cloud. I can imagine how the servant would have said it. Cloud, no deal. To discourage you. Some of you, when you don't see the first cloud, you have thrown in the towel. The Bible said he went back. He said, Go and check. I don't see anyone. He went back. Go. I didn't see. Go. The fourth time, I didn't see. The fifth time, I didn't see. The sixth time, some of you would have given up by the third time. By the fourth time, some of you would have given up. By the fifth time, some of you would have given up. But he waited. And then on the seventh time, somebody says seventh. <laughs> hey, he said, I see a cloud as small as this. A finger. <laughs> and Elijah said, that's it. Somebody shout, say, that is it. That's it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Oh, <laughs> just go 
out to the place of prayer. Just go, go and begin to pray. Go and begin to wrap pushuku tu sukutu. Librantaya basuka yanda. It might not work, but child of God, when you wake up in the middle of the night, just walk around your house. Ila baba bashaka yabatsote. They cannot raise an altar in this house. Mandelelele boshata. I spoil every altar of evil. Rapete seke teke teke. Somebody you need to walk around your house. Somebody you need to speak to the walls of your house. You need to talk to the walls of that house. You need to speak to that wall. And say, let me warn you. Nobody will die in this house. I will not carry that body in this house. In the name of Jesus. Hey! Stop complaining about that man. Go to the place of prayer. He said it's not correct. He said it's not correct. The Bible says the Lord has the heart of the king in his hand. He can turn it anywhere. Talk to God. Stop talking to man. You have reported him to your mother. You have reported him to your sisters. You have reported him to his mother. You have reported him to your pastor. Have you prayed? God can turn the hearts. Hallelujah. You are not married yet. It's time to pray. It's time to pray when that man will come so that you will recognize him from afar. He will just say, this is my husband. <laughs> this is my husband. He might be holding his trousers like this. It does not matter. This is my husband. And you will pray on top of that man's head. The mistake he made was to marry you. He must make it. He must make it. Ah! I remember how I wake up in the night. I will pray for my husband. Oh, pray. One day my husband woke up. He said, what is it? I said, you will make it. He go make him. Ah! I will not be the breadwinner of this house. You will make it. Sweet that you go make them. Hallelujah. When my mother-in-law sees me, she will say, my daughter, God bless you. Some of you are quarreling with your mother-in-law. God bless you. He must make it, oh. He must make it. That your son must make it. I've seen a situation where a son cannot even move. He married, even the wife ran away. I've seen a situation like that, very close. Child of God, I beg you women, who think, look, my elder sister said to me one day, my elder sister, she said, I wish I knew God at your time. We were there going to parties, me and my husband. We thought we were happening. When the things, when, when the problem came, it was like it was raining. <laughs> It was like it was raining. I don't want to go to so many. She lost her son of 25 years. He just slumped. It was a blow in our family. While we were still nursing that, my mother died. While we were still nursing that, her husband died. Her husband could not take it. That son, he used to call him my son. My son. You know when you, when you have a particular son, you are, you, are, you are happy with. You know when God say, I am, I, am, I, am, I am pleased with this one. That's how he was pleased with this one. So they wanted to get him. They caught that boy. They shot the arrow to that boy. The boy slumped. <laughs> 25 years. I'm not talking about a miscarriage. The boy just graduated as a lawyer. Ah! And he slumped. <laughs> it was a blow. Then the husband, he will come out in the morning. He, he will say, that's okay. He's okay. He's the fune. That's okay. My sister will say, don't mind him more. In the night, he will not sleep. He will be crying. He will say, I should have died instead of that boy. I should have died instead of that boy. That's why he cried, cried till he died. He actually died. And when my sister stood, sat down there, she asked the question. She said, my job, God have mercy. Let your mercy prevail over judgment. Have mercy. When I looked at my elder sister, I said, I don't want to be like this. <laughs> I'm a Leo Sakayanda. I don't want to be like this. <laughs> so I went to the place of prayer. I went to dwell there. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, you shall abide under the shadow of the Most High God. Hey, I don't know who is not abiding. Let that place be your address. When Satan is looking for you, let him see you in the secret place of the Most High. You need to stay there. Stop complaining about your mood. Stop complaining about something. Go and stay in the secret place. Go and hang in there until things change. Hallelujah. Stay there. You know what the Bible says? 
The Bible said princes are on foot. <laughs> and beggars are on horses. Child of God is an anomaly. It's not normal. You say you are the daughter. You are the son of the most high God. Ah, you are a prince. You are a princess. It's not normal. There are some things you are doing that are not normal. You need to change the abnormal. You need to change it. You need to shift. Somebody says shift. There has to be a shift in the realm of the spirit. Oh, you have been taking some things. No, 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 no. Somebody say no. 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 Don't take it. Don't take it. When they give you an evil report, say no. Tell the doctor, don't be angry. Oh. No. I reject it. I don't have cancer. I don't have a lump. I reject. Some of you are just there, just. <laughs> Oh, let me, let me round off here. He said it is a weapon of war. Prayer is a weapon of war. Prayer is not a monologue. Oh, as we talk to God, somebody listen, God will talk to you. He will tell you what to do. He has told me before. Ah, Masatayaba. You need to hear my story with my husband. Ah, you need to hear. There was a time I prayed over my husband. The Lord began to tell me some things. And he told me exactly what to do. Immediately I did it, things shifted. <laughs> you will hear it's not a monologue. Some of you just talk, 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 talk. Listen, he's talking. Listen, carry Bible and paper. You will write something. Hallelujah. Keep prayer keeps us in the supernatural. It is cultivating the presence of God. Prayer keeps you rapture ready. <laughs> oh, when you are praying, you, you will not miss it. You will not miss the first flight to heaven. Are you listening to me? You will not miss it because God will tell you where you are wrong. You know, some of you think that prayer changes God. Prayer changes you. You are the one that will change. Hallelujah. Prayer is not a duty, as I said. It's a privilege. It's not for special people. It's for everyone. There's nothing like you are called to pray. Anointing comes by praying. Prayer gives you access to his glory. <laughs> oh, let's stop here. I want you to take Lamentation 2.19. He said, pray at the beginning of the night watches. Lamentation 2.19. Pray, cry out. Pour out your hearts like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands towards him for the life of your young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Pray, cry out to him. Rise up on your feet. Somebody lift up your voice and just worship him. Talk to the commander of the armies of Israel. He is the commander. He's the one that gives the commander. Somebody salutes the king of kings and the lord of lords. Somebody worship your master. Somebody give him glory. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Hey, to the world. Who has the whole world in his hands? Uh, eh, the Bible says he maketh the heaven is strong. We believe that God has started a great work in you. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I accept him into my life as my Lord and Savior. Satan, I reject you. Lose your hold over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join us every Tuesday, 8.30 a.m. at our WWP centers in Abuja, Calaba, Enugu, Lagos, Port Harcourt, Uyo, and Jos. For more information, log on to our website, www.whenwomenpray.org or Facebook, When Women Pray Nigeria. Call 0803-788-0968. When Women Pray, Raising an End Time Army for God.